OpenShift uses projects which act as a boundary to resources. Consider a project to be like an enhanced Kubernetes namespace. All resources can be grouped in a project and then this acts as an isolation boundary. The different users and groups can be granted different roles for each project. A cluster administrator may have access to all of the projects while a developer may only have access to one project. So isolation starts at the Linux kernel where we have Linux namespaces that provide an isolated view between the processes on the same host. Namespaces act like the foundation layer for Kubernetes namespaces that provide isolation in the cluster environment. You can have limitations on namespaces to, for example, ensure that pods on a node in one namespace have a set limit of RAM or CPU. OpenShift takes all of this as its foundations for projects and implements Kubernetes namespace as the main building block to manage access to resources. In OpenShift, we have namespaces that are reserved for cluster level admin access. And then we have users that work with a higher level abstraction of projects to store their resources. The pod holds a container which holds your application and you know we can have limits on pods. For example, we can set the RAM or CPU limit. So what else can we do to ensure we have a secure containerized environment? A core building block for OpenShift security is security context constraints. So just before we jump into the details, let us examine some of the common security issues that we have with containers that OpenShift security context constraints can overcome. We have a number of security flaws with containers when you run them with their defaults and not in an OpenShift environment. We have a pretty big security issue with containers being a root user and with the excessive capabilities of privileged containers. Both of these represent a large attack surface. More than often, containers only need a subset of root privileges to carry out their role. So you should remove all capabilities except those explicitly required for the process to perform its role. So here we can use OpenShift security context constraints to lock down and control pod behavior. Security context constraints allow you to control the pod and they do a pretty good job of locking down your pod behavior with the default restricted SCC. SCCs allow you to do a range of things such as drop privileges by default and to not have any privileged containers in your stack. You can also stop containers running as root. Instead, the container gets a UID of the project it's running in. 